September 6th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 1 Timothy chapter 4 from the New Testament. Now the Spirit explicitly says that in the later times some will desert the faith and occupy themselves with deceiving spirits and demonic teachings, influenced by the hypocrisy of liars whose consciousness are seared. They will prohibit marriage and require abstinence from foods that God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For every creation of God is good and no food is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by God's word and by prayer. By pointing out such things to the brothers and sisters, you will be a good servant of Christ Jesus, having nourished yourself on the words of the faith and of the good teaching that you have followed. But reject those myths fit only for the godless and gullible, and train yourself for godliness. For physical exercise has some value, but godliness is valuable in every way. It holds promise for the present life and for the life to come. This saying is trustworthy and deserves full acceptance. In fact, this is why we work hard and struggle, because we have set our hope on the living God who is the Savior of all people, especially of believers. Command and teach these things. Let no one look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in your speech, conduct, love, faithfulness, and purity. Until I come, give attention to the public reading of Scripture, to exhortation, to teaching. Do not neglect the spiritual gift you have, given to you and confirmed by the prophetic words when the elders laid hands on you. Take pains with these things, be absorbed in them, so that everyone will see your progress. Be conscientious about how you live and what you teach. Persevere in this, because by doing so you will save both yourself and those who listen to you. God, I'm about to make somebody mad. <laughs> it's not my intention. I just know them well enough to know that that's how they'll take it. They'll take offense to it. And I don't know how else to say what I need to say. Because it's said out of love. Uh, and it's said out of affirmation and confirmation of your word. And just like Paul is telling Timothy, uh, to be to pay attention to how you live and what you teach and, and persevere in this that I'm not saying this is going to be easy in fact Paul says we work really hard and we struggle but we have our hope set on the living God who is the savior of all people especially of believers and it's what I hold on to when I go into situations that are confrontations and we all have those situations and I can choose right now to not have that confrontation, to just let that person continue to say things that are incorrect about salvation and heaven and you, God, and your word. Or I can gently and kindly, in the best way possible, uh, point him back to your word and show him that he's missing some pretty crucial elements of salvation. And I have to, I have to love your people enough to do that. And today, I'm not sure that I love your people enough to do that. I have to love them more than the agitation and the frustration and the rudeness and the selfishness and all those things that are getting pushed back at me as I share your word with other people. Just like Paul's telling Timothy to go out and share publicly um, your word. I get a lot of pushback on that. I get a lot of persecution about it. I, I deal with a lot of interesting personalities. Probably not as much as I potentially could. I'm sure you're holding a lot of that back. But today, God, I, I don't love your people. <laughs> and I know that's the wrong thing to say, but I am just being honest and transparent. And I need to have my heart changed, my heart's attitude changed right now, and my mind attitude changed right now to love this person enough to not only let them know, but the others that they're influencing online, to let them know that that is not how you work a relationship with God. That is not how you participate in one. That is not your way to salvation. None of those things will work. God, I just plead for grace and patience for my heart right now. I am really struggling 
especially this week <sighs> with the world and how arrogant it would be to do so because I've acted the same way the world's acting right now. I just seem to take offense to it this week. It seems everybody is selfish and everybody, it's all about them and, and, and they don't even stop for a second and put themselves in somebody else's shoes just for a moment and realize what it is they're doing. And it's so funny for me to be saying that. That's why I'm asking for the grace and patience because you were asking me to do the same thing. You're asking me to put myself in their shoes and would I want somebody to set me straight about your word, about salvation, about having a relationship with you. And I'm truly thankful for all the people who you put in my life who did that. Who even though it, it was painful at times, who set me straight about all the things that I got wrong about my relationship with you, that I had wrong about what it said in the Bible and what I assumed it said in the Bible. So God, I do know that my prayer today is, is ironic, but it's perfect timing as you always have uh, with what Paul's writing to Timothy. No, you've been given a gift. You were told to go out and do these things. You were told out to do, go out and do public reading of scripture, to teach about it. Do not neglect this gift that you've been given. And you've called me to do the same thing. And unlike other people who just put on this good Christian face and everything is hunky-dory, I work through my relationship with you. And I try really hard to bring these things to your attention because I struggle with things. I am a human being. And it's the only way that our relationship is going to get stronger and deeper is if I work through these icky, hard, messy relationship stuff with you. So I'm just being honest. I'm really struggling with the world right now. God, I know this person's heart. I know that they are good and kind and didn't mean to offend. And that's not how I want to come across when, when I talk to them. But sometimes when we're talking about things that are the most important thing in the world, which is our relationship with you and whether we're getting to heaven or not, unfortunately, sometimes that offense is just going to happen. God, today, allow me to put my own feelings away and replace them with your love and your grace and your mercy, because what I feel right now isn't enough to take care of this situation. I need your strength. I need your love to overflow in my heart for this person and the other people they're affecting. I need the right words to explain these things to them. I need their heart to be ready to hear these things and only you can do that. God, I will persevere, but not on my own will and definitely not with my own strength. Because there's days like today where I'm just done. I'm done with people. I'm done with being nice to people. I'm done with mean people. I'm just done. And then I go back to what you did for me. When I was like that. When I was selfish. When I was arrogant. When I was mean to other people. And you sent your son to die on the cross for me. While I was still a person unsaved, you sent your son to the cross to die for me. To forgive all of those sins. And even after you gave me my new heart, you knew that I would still be a sinful person. And he took care of those as well. God, don't let me give up on people. I know your words have the power to change people's lives. I know you have the power to change people's hearts. Renew mine today and make it a right spirit so that I can go out and tell other people. Fulfill my heart with the love that you had for me when I was evil, when I was cruel, when I was mean, when I was selfish. Fill my heart with that kind of love for other people. Enough so that I'm willing to put everything I believe on the line at the risk of possibly losing a friendship, 
of receiving pushback, of feeling uncomfortable. Allow me to love them enough to tell them what the truth is. And then just help provide the strength and support that they need as hopefully they ask questions about what I share. God, I thank you for showing me constantly the love that I will always strive to have in my heart. Most of the time I get it completely wrong. But you are such a consistent example in my life of what it should look like. And I'll keep working on it. In your son's name I pray. Amen.